yeah, it looks like at least somebody's... Yes, we're good. Okay, yeah, if we're good, we're good. I like that people have mentioned that there's so many gun plockets. Anyway, yes. Hi, welcome to Julie Makes the Grade. I'm Julie, we've got Zach. So, the whole point of this stream I decided was that People keep asking me a lot about Gunpla, and I seem to have infected a few people, including you, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Um. The second I have more shelf space, I will build more Gunplas. I feel like I have some sort of weird medic virus that lets me. Li I'm like a carrier. I don't, I don't even know. know anything about Gundam, and I like. <laughs> you don't Gundam have to. Yeah, That's the fun. beauty of this hobby. I look. Listen, people don't know fucking any shit about Ninjago, but they still buy Lego. Yeah, I barely know anything about Ninjago, and my house is basically filled with like. Yeah, there you go. So. Who, who gives a shit? Anyway, um, so for those who don't know, Gunpla is the hobby about making model kits based off the Gundam series, which has been running for, I want to say, 40 years at least at this point. It's been a long time. Um, yeah, because... Yeah. yeah, sorry. You no, no. Uh, I'll look up. Well, basically, for those who don't know as well about Gundam, is that I know people kind of get super overwhelmed by that fact that's a huge long series um but after a certain point it became like uh say power rangers or sentai or most other toku shows in that every year or two is a different iteration in different universe so there are lots of places to jump in um right now the current one is iron blood orphans uh that is on its second season and most uh gundam shows at this point have two seasons and a movie that's pretty much the standard affair. So I decided 70, I want... 79. Yes, 79. Se Good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it had a rough start as well, because... Don't go... Don't watch the original series. That's all I'm going to say. Not because it's okay. like... Not because it's like, oh, super questionable and bad. Well, like, to some degree it can be, because, hey, maybe don't moralize space Nazis, especially in this day and age. Don't go watch that. But also... That show only survived because of A, its huge female fan base that like kept it alive through the ratings, and B, through the kits. Like merchandising Wait, is what kept start... that show alive. There were kits like at the very beginning. That's not something that started like fairly recently. No, no, no. There have been kits since the eighties. Uh, those kits I had definitely. No idea. Yeah, those kits like uh, the early ones required like paint and glue. It's only around the time like I want to say nineties uh, or so that's when it really got um, big with just being snap fit kits that require no glue. They're all held together by tension and friction and um, you know intersectional joints and stuff. Uh, they didn't require paint. They used sticker applications to cover whatever um, paint apps they couldn't do in the factory. Uh, and they started, you know, making their own custom paints and stuff. So anyway, I wanted to specifically do the stream to show people, instead of just telling what this whole hobby is like in action. And specifically, we're going to be starting off with a kit from the most recent season of I'm Blooded Orphans. This little cricket hooligan, as I like to call him, because he's basically holding a cricket bat. Like, come on. <laughs> Yes, uh, this is the Io Shiden frame. It's one of the so-called grunt suits, which are always famous amongst fans because when you have, like, the grunt suit, that offers so much customization for a lot of people who are into that scene. Also, if you're going to have, like, several of these things on screen, you need to actually make them look cool. So they actually get a lot of their best work put into them, which I find really funny. Um, and everyone has their own favorite grunt suits. The most famous would be the very first one, the Zaku 2. Um, I also like the Jinx from Double O. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Greys is the most common one from I'm Blood Orphan Season 1, but now we've got the Io Sheet and Frame, which has a cricket bat and a shield. I love it. It's great. Um, so, Specifically about this uh, hobby, uh, for people who don't know, they it's not really graded in difficulty, it's graded in complexity. Because I'm one of those people who say you can jump in at any point. Unless you build a perfect grade as your first kit, in which case then, Godspeed. If you do that, Godspeed. Because those kits are like, I don't know, two feet tall? That sound, that, I, like I looked into some of those, and to me that seems like 
I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this Porsche and learn how to be a mechanic on it. Like, don't do that. That's a bad I mean, idea. it's it's not like that. It's more like it's more like someone who wants to build their first car. Right. Like you don't you it's, maybe it's, don't want to do that. Right. Like it's really scary. I don't like it. I I recently um my oldest friend came over. I've known him since fifth grade, he used to live here, he now lives back in the US where he was born, and he came here for a holiday during Christmas and New Year's, and we went to the hobby store, uh, where I go to every day, and he was just looking through, and then he just quickly said, I just gotta check something on my phone, I was like, okay, cool, he looked at his phone for five minutes, and he went, okay, and then he just picked up a $300 perfect grade kit, and just walked to the counter, and I was like, what are you doing? And he said, I'm here for two weeks, this is the first time we've seen each other in like three years, let's just build this kit together, and that thing was so massive, it was, we built a single limb each per day. Oh my god, that's so much work. I mean, they're it's cool not... as hell. Oh like, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, um, also it's a case where, frankly, um, Perfect grades, because they're so huge, they require so much... I want to be a fly on the wall in the engineering room, you know? And, like, see how these people come up with the actual fucking kits for these goddamn fictional robots. Like, the same way I want to be in the room when, like, you know, the designers of Transformer toys actually figure out how to make these things transform. Like... Yeah, that stuff has always been really fascinating to me. Like, in, yeah. so in high school, I did, um... I thought for a little while that I might want to be a, uh, like an op I, I forget what the name is, but like I, I took a drafting class. I took yeah. two actually. Mm -hmm. And for a while I thought I might want to like design fucking, you know, like little plastic dish soap containers and shit like that for a, a living. <laughs> Cause I thought it was fun and, and, yeah. and not that that would be like my only thing I wanted to do, but that's the job you get if you do that. You're, right, you're making yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, like table legs and stuff. Oh, but, yeah. Um, I would imagine that there is somewhere there is a several uh, gigabyte file that's just <laughs> the most complex, uh, like, uh, 3D drafting mm -hmm. document ever, and that's what those perfect grades are built on. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also the case where perfect grades at the moment... Um, there's only a few recent ones, uh, because they take so long to build, and also they only take, like, the most popular designs from the most, like, best-rated, highest-selling seasons of Gundam. So, at the moment, like... Oh, yeah, you definitely yeah. don't want to fuck up and accidentally make a perfect-grade Gundam out of something that nobody cares about, because nobody's gonna buy that. Yeah, that's Too the thing. Too much money. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh... Basically, the grades go like this. You have um, SD, which is uh, super deformed, or chibi style. It's basically the little cartoony Gundams you can get. They're very cute. The, of all things, weirdly though, that line has seen the most dip in quality in recent years. Which is really well, weird to me. Because it's so annoying, because it's a great way for a lot of little kids to actually get into the hobby before you can trust them with, like, knives and shit. And, like... They're really adorable kits. A lot of them actually really cool and well designed, the early ones, but now they've come up with the you know, the new line which is slightly cheaper and there's a lot of there's a lot of sticker application and a lot of hollow parts in them and they're not as good as they used to be. Um which is weird because the next grade you have up, which is high grade H G, uh, that is seen some of the biggest advancement. And that doesn't surprise me because it's the best selling grade. Uh, A, it, it just hits all, like, the through lines. A, it's fairly affordable, uh, compared to most other hobbies. Um, depending on where you live, like, average kits at this point, depending on which season you're buying from, range from, like, 800 yen to, you know, 1500 yen, which is, in terms of US dollars, like, 10 to 15 bucks. Sometimes 20, uh, some of the older high grades cost about 30 bucks because they have a lot more stuff in them, but, yeah... That's not too bad for a kit you can buy, like, in any other place. Because if you're into, like, say, anime figurines of, like, your favorite seasons, those cost, like, 200 fucking bucks. Like... That's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Uh, people are into that, and that's A-OK -okay by me. But, like, I... 
it's not even a quantity thing. I just like having lots of robots and ha- like having something to build a lot of the time is a fun hobby. Um, but recently, high grades have definitely seen some of the biggest advancements because, you know, it's their best selling line. This is the one sold to both kids, teens, and adults. It's like it's got to keep. It it has to keep, um, you know, innovating in a lot of ways. Um, t- currently, there are two main lines uh, to follow, along with like kind of a third. There's the IBO season, um, which makes sense. It's the flagship show at the moment. You've got to make kits that look really good for it. Uh, the cool thing about these kits is that they have like an inner frame that you would mostly only see in. Uh, master grades and stuff. Um, they're a lot more complex, a lot more poseable. Like they have a lot of, a lot more points of articulation, which is super cool. Um, then you've also got the Origin series, which is basically them redoing like the early uh, seasons of Gundam um, and like the lead up to the first season uh, in backstory uh, through original video animations, OVAs and stuff. And basically those kits are really cool because they don't have as many stickers and there's a lot more complexity to them. And you see, again, mechanics and gimmicks in them that you would only see in like, you know, master grade kits. So it's really cool to actually see that in such a small frame at such an affordable price for the most part. You also have um, the Build Fighters line, which is basically... So, I get why some people don't like Build Fighters, but a lot of people do, and I'm one of them. Build Fighters is the sports ex- anime okay, Gundam ex- season. Ex- yeah, that, I, you tried to explain this to me before, and I got really confused. It's Metabots. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, I, okay, so here's my question. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's get a question from I, you. I don't think, what, in the fiction of that show, mm-hmm. does do Gundam shows exist? Yes. Like, yes. where are they? So, okay, got the it. history of that show is that it takes place in the near future, where Gundam has existed this entire time. The entire history of Gundam, all the trivia, everything exists. It's Earth. It's just our Earth. But the only difference is, in the near future, a new, like, competitive sport arrives, especially in the in the Japan scene, where... You build the kits, you place them on these little pedestals on, like, a big VR platform that's installed into, like, you know, um, high school gyms and, like, uh, stores as well as stadiums, and that then actually creates a virtual field for those models to, like, come to life and play fight in. Do you know what you just explained to me? What? The plot of (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yeah. It's Gundam Yu-Gi-Oh, and I love it. Which someone just said in the chat literally the second I said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's seriously Gundam Yu-Gi-Oh. It's great. Um, the cool thing a lot of the time is that uh, the Bill Fighters season... Okay. There are two seasons of Bill Fighters at the moment and an OVA. Only watch the first season. It's a really good season. It's a very typical... Like, simple, fun show that's very heartfelt and is seriously a love letter to Gundam and Gunpla. I like it a lot. Um, there's a lot of, like, you know, bits of trivia and little hints and nods and winks and nudges about, like, the series as a whole. Um, there's really great characters. And the fun thing about, um, the fun thing that Bill Fighters introduced was, uh, the fact that because this is a world where Gundam exists, a lot of the kits that kids built are just, like, the kids in the series build are just gonna be, like, fucking mishmashes of, like, existing kits and stuff. Oh, that's awesome. So, like, yeah, like, people are building their own, like, hero kits and, uh, your grunt suits and stuff to fight in these competitions. And it's really cool. Like, one of them, um, one of the most famous is, uh, one of the most famous suits is the Gion, which I like. Uh, I say like and love at the same time, which I love. Because the Gyan has got a beam rapier and a freaking shield and looks like an old knight. And this kid, at one point, just adds Gatling guns and two shields to it. <laughs> it's like, I love that's the his idea kid. of, like, yeah, this is basically describing someone explaining, like, um, uh, fuck. What was that rare game? The, the, um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Balls? Yeah, no, it's seriously fight. that. <laughs> it's it's slightly insidious to the point where they release those custom like little uh, add-on kits you can buy separately so you can make those kits as well as the kits from the oh, show. 
That's awesome slash devious. <laughs> I know, like, this thing, Bill Fires is the most capricious capitalistic series, but it's also really good. And also it's the That's case fair. where if you can look past the merchandising of Transformers or Marvel or DC or Power Rangers... I was going to say, talking to a guy who runs a Power Rangers podcast, so yeah. Like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> honestly, this is basically like if... Because it's a unique place for them to be in. Like, hey, we have a whole season about like space drama and stuff. Why don't we just make a show about kids building these model kits and fighting them? Like a space drama, but it takes place in the real world and it's a sports anime. Like, why not? Um, I, th- this is a good question. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, don't, and like, it, you it's... You only watch the first season, so what happens in the second so, season? So the first season is cool because, hey, it's a global cast. It's literally like a global cast of characters because it's the international tournament they're fighting towards, the main characters. And it's these high school, plucky high school kids who end up making their way in the through the ranks of like adults playing this game as well and it's really cool. The second season is about the national tournament. So they ramp down. Okay. So there's already a ramping down of scale. It's like, okay, fine. But also all of the yeah. characters are really like even more generic than you'd expect. And gotcha. it's also got it's also got the thing I hate in any of these shows where for some reason or another all of the girl characters fall in love with the dumb main protagonist who doesn't know anything. I, so my initial thing, uh, and I didn't want to say it because mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to be a jerk if I was wrong, but I was going to say, so you said don't watch season two, so how pervy does it get? <laughs> per- oh, actually, <laughs> like a little pervy. Uh, yeah. So I w- I, this is not me calling him out, but ever since a mistake an honest error was made by one Waypoint Editor-in-Chief Austin Walker in a video. Oh no! I'm not calling him out! I'm not calling him out! But the problem is, there's a kit that people see from the second season of Bill Fighters, which is called the Super Fumina kit, which is based on the character in the show, the main female lead, um, Fumina, because it's it's main trio in the show. Two boys and a girl. Okay. And... People see that kit and they go, oh, wow, so, like, in, I'm guessing in the show, like, she built a kit based on herself to fight with the boys. That's really cool and stuff, because it's just, like, her, in, like, in a maid outfit with, like, you know, a gun and shield and, as a Gundam. And that's a cool idea, in essence. And people think that's actually how it goes in the show. No, 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 because let me tell you. Well, I, I think he... I feel like I remember seeing that, and I think he was just guessing. He was just guessing, but ever it, since yeah, then, yeah. people that's what people make the general assumption as, because it's a nice gotcha. thought. It's a nice thought. However, in the actual show, that kid isn't built by her, it's built by a guy who's creeping on her. Oh no! <laughs> and he even says, he did A, without permission, he unveils it in front of her at a national building competition at the, in the very last episode of the, of the second season, and he even points out that he made adjustments to her measurements for optimization, and then it points to the waist and breasts. And she's yeah, course, a so. high school kid! Well, I mean, I built this giant robot of you, but I did make your boobs bigger, so... <laughs> God, oh, it it sucks, yeah. and I want. That's such a cool idea that people come up with, but it's it's not the case. I just want to mostly point out that's the biggest like that is emblematic of everything I don't like about Bill Fighter season two because it it leans into being a capricious capitalistic bullshit like yo know, uh, pipeline to sell you toys, and I hate that. There's no actual story or you know heart to it as I would call it. But anyway. Um, okay. yeah. So, uh, then you've also got Real Grade, which I've got a Real Grade kit, kit here with me. This is the Double O Riser. This is a really, like, overly complex kit, which I like, but it's at such a small scale. It's basically a Master Grade complex kit at a tiny, like, 6-inch, um, height. That took me, like, days to build. Um, I love it. it it's great. It looks really cool. It's really awesome. Um... Then you've also got Master Grade, which is uh, you can scale up a bit more because they're 1 to 100 scale. You've also got in the 1 to 100 scale No Grade, which is pretty cool. Um, 
so yeah, it's yeah, definitely check out the complexity. My aim with this show is just to actually show kits in each grade, just to give everyone an idea of what you're gonna get when you buy stuff like this uh, across different seasons as well. Like, cause different seasons are gonna have different quality or different um, complexity and gimmicks to them. So without further ado, I'm just gonna quickly switch to a scene of mine uh, while I unveil this kit and. I'm gonna keep running the audio. I'm just gonna let you revel on this, Zach. You'll see it soon. I don't like the way you set up that bit. I'm concerned about what I'm about to be looking at. That's fine, don't worry. It's all good, it's all good. So what I'm just gonna show on the screen at the moment is official Gundam art. God, I can't wait for your reaction to this. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know how I said there's a dedicated female fan base to Gundam since the start? They know this. They fucking know this. Yeah. I mean, I definitely the first the first time I heard about Gundam Wing was uh uh or, or Gundam at all was through girls in my high school who wanted to kiss all the Gundam Wing boys. So, I'm They're not very surprised. pretty boys. <laughs> right, I'm just setting up at the moment and also tying my hair back because this is serious business. Oh, yes. Yes. So, anyway, let's just cut back to... Um, don't worry, my other interstitials are not as uh, egregious. I just mostly... <laughs> I'm so glad I got rea your reaction to that. <laughs> you have made my day. Alright, so, um, also well. ignore that. It's fine. Uh, you'll see it soon on the camera. There is basically a hole in my wall because of renovations we're doing to this house, and it's really annoying. I mean, I'm, the, at least the end of that sentence wasn't because I got mad at Gunpla. Oh no, <laughs> god no. I, god no. No, 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 no. Um, anyway. So, this is basically my setup. I've got a cutting board. I bought a runner stand because I have a problem. Anyway, <laughs> so let's have a look inside the kit. Pop that to the side. So the nice thing about IBO kit is that you don't get actually a lot of runners. There's actually a lot of, well, there's a lot less waste in comparison to other kits because this is about half the amount you'd get from most other kits, um, which is a good change of pace. Let's just open these up. Uh uh, Jordan in the chat is asking mm -hmm. what a, if you could under, explain what a runner stand is. I think okay. I got it. But So, these are runners. They're basically frames, or you, you can call them whatever you want. This is to hold them because, as you can see, all of these runners, oop, let me just angle the camera up, are alphabetized. That's how you can organize them. And that's how they refer, are referred to instructions. So you have to build, like, you know, C21 goes to C22 and such. This runner stand, because it's also alphabetized, just pop that in there. Oh, nice. Just hold it for me. Because otherwise I just have a pile cool. of runners everywhere, or just I'd have to set up another box and shit. So that's actually really good. Um, because... Yeah, that's something mm -hmm. I noticed, because, like, so I do a lot of um, Legos, and... Legos have bags that are numbered, um, mm -hmm. but the thing is that you do them in order. Yeah. And that's not really how gun, gu Gundam kits seem to work. You oh, pull no. stuff from all of them. So I, I was watching, um, uh, you know, host of Totally Reprised Molly, because I got her a couple of kits as a present when I visited her in Seattle, to spread the sickness. Um, I specifically <laughs> was watching her, and she pointed out, like, this is so slow because not everything's in order. Like, you're not putting A1 to 2 to 3 together. You're going A15 to B23 to C41. You know, and it's like, I realized it actually is a typewriter effect. It's the same way your keyboard is formatted. It's because so you don't type too fast, or in this case, build too fast. It actually forces you to slow down a bit. I don't know if that's intentional, mm. but I thought that was actually a pretty cool little thing. Um, now, just because... There's so few runners in this kit, I'm actually going to space this out because I don't want to just knock everything over and make a fool of myself, even more so than I have on camera already. So, let's start organizing. So, Zach, I've actually got a question for you because you've recently gotten into the hobby as well. 
thanks to me. Yes, I've made two. And so the whole point of Gunpla is that they involve glue. That's the nice thing about them. Yes. So apparently, because of Gunpla, you accidentally super glued your mouse to your desk at one point. <laughs> yeah. I need to know how that happened. Um, my uh, tiny, sweet, adorable kitten, who I love very, very uh... much, actually broke one of my pieces, mm -hmm. and so I had to super glue it back together. And I don't have anything to like hold it up really so it was just set on the table um and i i figured out real quickly that I, I oh i can't just put this on the table i've got to put it on something so i moved it uh into a little tray that i found but then there was wet super glue sitting on the table <laughs> so jesus christ basically, yeah <laughs> you fucking monster I mean, uh... <laughs> all right. Well, let me go. And I've now shown what a kit looks like when you've taken out of the box. This can be intimidating to some people. I fucking love this. It. This is. It's just so organized. Not even even without the runner stand. I just like how oh, it's all put into separated colors and parts and different stuff. When you actually start building these regularly, you start to notice patterns like oh, like. You know, the B um, section is usually for, like, armor and stuff, along with everything else. C is usually for, like, inner frame stuff, and A is for, like, the attachments. And this differs from season to season, but, like, I just like it a lot. Anyway, I'm going to go over the tools now, because I've got several tools with me. So, these are the main um, three that I recommend. Yep, oh, what's up? So, two things real quick from mm -hmm. the chat. Uh, a, Melding says you should message her when you're done. Okay. So there you go. Thanks, I'm, Mom. I am your okay. message service. And then uh, Lucas would like to compliment your crest. Thank you. Yes, this is my there. crest of friendship necklace that I have. Because <laughs> I'm a fucking dork. Um, anyway, yes, the tools we have. So these are, these are the three that I recommend to people. You can buy them in fairly affordable, um, like, uh, packs. So we've got nippers. These are the main things you need. Nippers are great because they're specifically built to cut these pieces out. A lot of people use pliers and stuff, that's fine, but these are great because they're quite sharp and they leave clean cuts for the most part. Um, then you've also got a file, which I like because a lot of the time you're going to like have messy parts when you initially cut them out of the frames, and they'll be fine, a lot of people don't give a crap, I do, and I like you know smooth parts. Um, yeah, will... I, I will say that mm -hmm. I... You don't have to have one of those. No. I, I put mine together without it. It's not like it's going to mess it up. But no, no. Like, yeah. You can tell where yeah. where all the pieces came off. So. Yeah. Um, also, tweezers. These are great for applying stickers. Because the thing with stickers is that they're tiny uh, for the most part. Um, where was the sticker sheet? I did have a tiny sticker sheet for this one. Just give anyone a sense of that. Here we are. So, your average IBO kit will have only a few stickers. It, it's weird. IBO kits range from having a couple of stickers to having all of the stickers. Uh, this is one of the former. This is how small the stickers are. If that will focus. Yeah. They're yeah, freaking tiny. Uh, the stickers were the hardest part, and it wasn't close. Yeah. Uh, my, my hands are not steady enough to to do that. I needed to use uh, tweezers. Yeah, tweezers are great, especially because uh, if you use just your fingers, um, a lot of the just natural oils in your fingertips are going to cause the stickiness to rub off uh, quicker than normal. Um, tweezers are great as well just because it, it's just easier. It's, it's just easier to like get it at the right angle. Um, another thing I also have, which I might not use today depending on how we go with the cutting, is my X-Acto knife. This is very handy, especially if you're just cutting off little bits and pieces of extra parts when I cut out of the frame. I have cut myself on that f a fair amount, though. We're not going to go too much into that. I was going to say, I'm not allowed to have one of those. So <laughs> After your eventual super glue? Yeah, I bet. Um, <laughs> and I've recently started getting into this. I now have um, sanding paper. I specifically use 1,000 grain sanding paper. It's really good for just 
smoothing out all those parts, especially because at this point, I like my kits to look really nice because I want to put time and effort into them. That's just me, though. Again, you don't need that. That's on a base-by-base -base personal preference. So, let's open the instruction manual. Um, the cool thing about IBO kits as well is that they now have, like, instructions in English and stuff. Like, you can read, like, all the backstory about these mobile suits and, like, all the details of them in English, which is really cool. Um, and also, the instructions hey, are, in, are in English I'll now. I'll be right back, Jules. I'll be right back. No problem. I'll keep going with the show. So, here we've got the instructions. Uh, they usually come out in a fold-out page like this. They're all in black and white. Um, which can be annoying because sometimes you don't know which piece is which, or you want to be double sure, and, you know, what can you do? Uh, this saves them money a lot of the time. So, the, you technically are supposed to start with the body, according to the instruction manual. I don't do that a lot of the time because I like to start with the feet. I like a base. I like having feet and legs, and then I build up because then I feel better about putting this robot together. Otherwise, I have a torso and a head and just all this crap lying around, and it it's better for me in an organizational sense a lot of the way. Um, and I feel like that's not necessarily the right way to build. It's just a much more manageable way to build because I've seen in um, kits like uh, the Real Grade series, the RG line, they tell you to start with the feet and the legs. So it actually seems to make sense for the most part. Anyway, let's start. So, uh, oh, another thing as well, you'll get, in, especially in high grade kits, is you'll get things called polycaps. They're these little things, that are uh, little plastic sheets, you don't need nippers for these. All of these little bits will just twist out of the frame. They're really handy. Um, they're mostly for connecting parts. Uh, they they work as you know sockets as well as um, you know just where arms and legs and hips and stuff all like join together. They're really handy. Um, I like them a lot. C some kids have moved to using them less, uh, which is fine as well because you know we're moving past these and that's fine. Uh, so let's start with the feet. So we have to start with D three and B twenty two. So, we got the D-frame here, as you can see. D. Let's cut out. Alright, so... I also tend to... The way uh, you'll see a lot of tutorial guides and other reviews um, instruct you on how to build stuff is when you're cutting, you initially want to cut actually away from the piece because that means you get less stress marks on the actual piece, which are these big glaring white bits. So, I like to just cut there first there, and there. But also, you can be lazy. That's fine. I'm sometimes lazy. I sometimes don't do that because it gets really boring. Sometimes sometimes the length of the build becomes tedious. But I actually like this because it makes me feel methodical and like I'm actually building something uh, at the start of a build. So then we make a second cut there. Cool. And usually I have a box set aside just to like hold the parts or I have a bin next to me because you will get extra plastic. Even if you cut at the edge, you might just want to make an extra second cut just to smooth things out. How's the chat going, Zach? Good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, I don't, there's not really any questions. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, uh, Jordan mm -hmm. says, uh, when you say cut away, do you, could you explain what you mean? Sure, so, as you can see, all the pieces are held together by these little struts. So I tend to cut at the strut first. So where this is the edge of the piece, as you can see there, I will cut, say, here. Because if you cut closer to the piece, uh, you'll get those stress marks, marks that I mentioned earlier. It just saves you as well on like, sometimes filings. You will have to make you know these second cuts, because as you can see now, I've got two pieces here to look at. Here is the Final one, where like I've cut, I've filed, it's smooth for the most part. And here is the one I've just cut out of the frame. Let that focus for the most part. Yeah, you can pretty much get the general idea from that, I think. They would just have all this stuff on this one that I just cut up. Alright. Zach, do you have any questions, actually? Um... Why does it take movies so long to get to Australia? Oh, we're going to the Australian questions, alright. So... <laughs> <sighs> I 
I saw that John Wick 2 was announced for wanna... May 11th, and I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. That was just only recently announced as well, because we didn't get a release date at all. So, a lot of it seems to come down to local distributors. Um, because, you know, Hollywood re recognizes there's a market here, but it's local distributors here who don't understand that for some reason. Because I think Australia was the third highest grossing country for the first John Wick when it initially came out in theatrical release. So why the fuck would you just release it here on time? Anyway, um... Uh, yeah, I remember Tyler telling me that he thought it wasn't going to come out at all, and I was yeah. like, that's, there's, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's weird, um... Like, you get, say, the Marvel movies, for example, they come out here a day or so early, which is great. Yeah, yeah. I which is hilarious that, yeah. to me. Um, cause I finally... remember getting really mad when Captain America came out there first. <laughs> yep, I was like, ha-ha, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> The fucking world premiere for Captain America happened in Australia before America. Yeah. Yeah, w welcome to the new age. Um, yeah, I don't know, like, I remember reading a fairly detailed explanation of that um, a while back, but I wouldn't be able to tell you at this moment. Um, so I guess, I, I originally thought it was a rating thing, but I guess that's not the case. It's, it's not that it's, like, too, some, too it's, violent. It sometimes whatever. can be. Um, violence is a weird thing in Australia because it's not really violence that gets rated um, that ups a you know, classification. It's drug use a lot of the time. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, um, I mean, that's what affected um, Left 4 Dead as well as uh, Fallout here. Because you use pills right. and, and stims and, and, and stuff. Over, over here, the ESRB will, like... like um... Well, I was going to say, like, I think you can get an E even if you have, like, um, mild alcohol use. Drug use might push you up to a T, but mm -hmm. it's not going to get you an M or anything like that just because you've right. got people drinking or using drugs in your game. Exactly. Um, I was just going to quickly turn on the light for this because I might need a bit of extra light. It's kind of unfortunate that... This whole shot is sadly a bit backlit thanks to my window being right there and the blinds don't fully close. So hopefully this will just help with that a little bit. It looks okay. Your lighting yeah. is fine. Yeah. It also helps me as well because in person, like, it's just a bit of extra, like, lighting. So, uh, yeah. At the moment, just building the feet. Because I build from the ground up. I don't like, I just, I don't like having a torso of a robot and it's just it's nothing to connect to. That feels weird for me. It also means I can make funny jokes with the build process, because then I can just attach, like, a gun where the torso should be. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, um... Mm -hmm. uh, Luke uh, has bought... Uh, he just bought the Legacy Tiger Zord. Oh, nice. And, and he just realized that all the sockets on the Zords match up. He had never noticed oh, yeah. before. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And he was he was just like slapping the dragon sword <laughs> side onto the onto like the where the feet of the falcon sword are and stuff oh, yeah. like that just for funsies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've totally messed around with gun pluckets while building them just because, man, it's really funny when you just put like the head on the waist joint and you just got like a head with giant legs. Yeah, I. I... So, uh, something I was wondering yeah. is, and I don't think it's it's necessarily uh, like a problem, but I did notice that the joints on Gunpla, though they are pretty tight for like just snap together stuff, mm -hmm. are actually still pretty loose. Yeah, like, uh, the it it they're not like you have to be careful when yes. you're when you're posing stuff, or the leg will just like come off. Um, and I get that, uh, you know, that's it, it might just be like a necessarily seri evil of yeah. non glue. That's um, part of it, yeah. But like, like I, I guess coming from and to be fair, like I know Lego is basically wizard magic, <laughs> but coming much. from Lego, I was like, man, I, this is like tough. I keep breaking this by accident just by pushing too hard. The nice thing, at least, you can pop that thing back in. Um, sometimes, uh, as a little tip, yeah. I got 
Where do I have it? Um, don't have it on me at the moment, but you can. Ah, here we go. You can either apply a very thin layer of super glue to uh, this um, the ball joints, which go into the sockets. That way, you've sure. got an extra layer to add a bit of thickness to it, which uh, adds rigidity. I'm not going to giggle at the fact that I said thickness and rigidity in the same sentence. Um, I also, will. <laughs> uh, if you don't have super glue, base nail polish. A uh, base coat is the exact same way. It also is less scary oh, yeah. than super glue. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. This stuff's really tacky. Yeah. So it'll... It's also, you can buy this, like, you know, freaking two bucks that, like, came out of Target. It's really good for this. Um, so, I would suggest don't use nail polish as, like, a paint if you want to paint your gun to plow, because I've heard stories about it chemically just making the plastic brittle, and I that terrifies me. Yeah. Also, Joel says uh, that that that's a good tip for me because I'm not allowed to have super glue. <laughs> that is a good tip for you. Yes, I don't think you're allowed many things anymore. Like, <laughs> it's it's very true and very sad. Are you still allowed hot topic? Um, I'm actually not sure that we have one in our mall, <laughs> I just realized. How do you live? How do you as Zach live without Hot Topic, your BDSM source? Mail order. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Inter internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of boxes that say stuff like, store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, because they don't want, like, people accidentally getting your mail and questioning it and stuff, yeah. Right. <laughs> which which actually backfired on me that one time. But... Oh, yeah, because sometimes people <laughs> just think it's nothing inside. Like, oh, it's fine, I'll just check once I... Oh, no, this is a, this is a strap. <laughs> oh, there's a dick in here. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, there's a dick in here. It's great. It's great. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure, because I don't want the stream to go on for too long, especially because I know uh, our fellow co-hosts Emily and Jordan would like to take over at some point, because uh, they're playing to stream Mass Effect uh, directly after me. I might just quickly run that by them. Um... Man, having the Slack channel, despite it being something that's a nightmare to navigate, is really handy. The Slack channel, uh, so I... Uh, some friends of mine from high school had mm -hmm. a very, very, very long running Facebook chat group. And we just recently switched, despite my protests, over to Discord instead mm -hmm. of Slack. And boy, I wish I had fought a little harder. <laughs> yeah? Cause Slack in terms of like PMs and threading and like, it's not perfect, but for like a free solution, it's pretty awesome. For a free solution for just so, simply like big group text chatting, it's pretty great. Like it's good at organizing the only everything. Thing, the only thing I wish it did was, um, well, there's two things that Facebook does that it doesn't. One is it yep. based, I'm pr I mean, and also you could see this as a negative, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, Facebook keeps everything you've ever said on it forever. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Which which Slack does not, obviously. Um, but also, Facebook, you can directly post video or audio into the chat, and you can't do oh, that cool. in Slack. Yeah. That's the one that bumps me out. Although, like, you could... Um, maybe that's for the best, knowing us. Well, that's true. Like, maybe... Uh, there, there's, yeah. a, there's a... On Facebook, there's a, just straight up a button in the chat that lets you just record a... Uh, video me or uh, um, audio message on your phone and post mm -hmm. it right into the, the chat window. Yeah. Which is cool. But yeah, we'd probably <laughs> we we'd <laughs> fuck that up real good. We 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 fill yeah. it up real quick with shit. I mean, there was that one night. Someone stupidly asked me because I was talking about Mikanzo as a ship from Overwatch. They asked, "What kind of fan art is there of that?" I just went, "I know what I have to do." <laughs> All of it? I just filled up that Slack chat with porn. With fan art porn. Because someone asked. That's kind. <laughs> like, come on. You don't ask me that and expect to not, like, get a genuine, serious, sincere response from me. People, they should know <laughs> yeah, better. Like, 
that you they stumbled into a trap. They they you set up a trap. That wasn't a trap. Says, it, that was them. That Joel wasn't says, building a trap and then you know. Joel, Joel says it's him and he was at work. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Now I know. Now it's all coming back. <laughs> It is funny, especially because, like, a lot of the time when you folks are, like, getting up and going to work and stuff, it's, like, midnight for me, so I'm just, like, shit posting at night, and you have to deal with all yeah, that. You, you typically, um, like, when I'm, you're usually on when I get up, but then mm -hmm. by the time I get to work, you have gone to sleep. Yeah. So, I usually catch the tail end of that stuff. <laughs> like Hot Topic BDSM? Ah, <sighs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so you can't escape it now. I mean, I'm not gonna say I didn't go to Hot Topic when I was a kid. Like this is. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not gonna fact. judge. I'm not gonna freaking judge. I just realized. So here's the thing. Okay, good. This I'm glad this happened. I didn't have to stage it. I forgot to put in a piece. Oh so no! Now you're gonna see me live having to actually jimmy this out with my fingernails and hands. And luckily it's not too hard because, A, it's only just a single, um... Okay, I hate this thing that it's... I don't know if it's an engineering thing or a model building thing. I hate it when you have, like, say, a peg going into, a, like, a hole or slot, right? Yeah. People call that the male part and the female part. Yeah. I think that's a very, very old term, and that engineering engineers just don't change their terminology but very then often. It bleeds into it bleeds into some of this hobby because I hear reviews saying that I'm just like, can you not? Like, yeah, get, like why? I think that I think that might go. I mean, I could tell you why. It's a oh very no, I know why. Reason. <laughs> I know why. Yeah, I think that's very, very old. Uh, yeah. Which, I mean, that doesn't mean we shouldn't change it, but I imagine it's one of those things where the dudes who are, you know, drafting plans are not even thinking about that as anything other than a technical oh, yeah. term. And yeah. if you were like, hey, that's a little fucked, they would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Like, that's the problem. When you just think about it for more than two seconds, it gets fucked. It's like, wait, wait, hold on. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm wondering. Also says how horny engineers are for this shit. I also have no idea how to Google that. <laughs> like, I'm trying to oh, figure yeah. out what term I would Google to. Nope, you're Googling it now. Do it. Out. Do it for me, Zach. Do it for the stream. <laughs> Do it for the people. The people want to know. Everyone, tell Zach you want him to Google male and female parts. No, see, I just got engineering and women, ah. or win, women and engineering. That's not what okay. I want. <laughs> oh, so you don't want women in engineering? Is that what you're saying? That's right. You don't That's want right. women in Keep STEM? Yeah. <laughs> no ladies in STEM. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what, what you're all about. <laughs> I don't I was... know. I can't find anything. <laughs> Well, Zach, let me ask, what kits do you actually have? I forgot. I have uh, well, let's see if you remember a the fat names. green man. Uh, <laughs> okay, yep, I know exactly which one you mean. Uh, yeah. And I have... The anime the... samurai boy? Yeah, I have one of the estrays, the okay. red estray. Yeah, so you've got a stray red frame, the master grade. Does that have the two katanas? It's got one. Okay. I can't remember which one you bought. If you bought, did you buy a high grade or master grade? <sighs> it's whichever one was one step higher than okay, the master grade. Fat green guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was not that tough. It took me a couple days. Uh, yeah. Of like doing it for a couple hours and then coming back. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I was saying, it's not really the grades aren't about difficulty. It's about complexity. Is you just have more parts. Yeah. That's that's. The, the one thing I will say about <clears throat> one of the reasons I, I wanted to uh, switch to, or, or not switch, I mean, I'll still do Lego, but mm -hmm. one of the reasons I wanted to get into to Gunpla is because 
I got too good at Lego, and I can do like a twelve hundred piece kit in like five hours, probably. Like, yeah, and and it was like, oh, that cost me one hundred and twenty dollars, yep. and now like, <laughs> and I did it. This is why we're reaching also, with Gunpla, yeah. Yeah, and also Lego is way more expensive than Gunpla is. Yeah, but you see, you you saw my fucking collection, like. No, 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 I'm not, sorry, I wasn't belittling your... Oh, no, no, I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying you're belittling, I'm just saying, like, it may be cheaper, but that may be not, that may not be a good thing. Yeah, when I first looked it up, I, I basically way overestimated how much Gunpla would cost. Like, I was yeah. kind of shocked it's when, I, when I looked into it. fairly affordable. Yeah, the, the big crazy ones are expensive, but, like, yeah. the... A, a, the average kid? A, a, like... A master grade is not that much money. No, like in the grand scheme of things, for what you're getting, which is basically an action figure you build. Right. Whereas, like, um, they don't have grades in Lego, but like I, mm. a say six or seven hundred piece set is probably sixty or seventy dollars. Like, yeah. and those are medium to small sets. So, yeah. Like. That's the thing. Like that's why I had never gone to Lego because, just. Man, I'm not... I don't like what I'm necessarily paying that much for. Like... It's very expensive. The The thing that started that I appreciate is that a lot of LEGO now uh, do stuff. I, I don't know how to <laughs> phrase this. But they, like, they have... There's a lot more playability to them. They have, like, gimmicks? Yeah, that's yeah. a good word for it. Like, yeah. I've got, um... I've got this thing that looks like a... Oh, man, I there's no way I can describe this. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can <laughs> look it up. Well, I'm not going to be able to look at it because I don't want to load like Chrome on this computer just in case the stream crashes. Right, but I'm hoping I can get like an idea uh, of how to describe it here. So it's a... Uh, it is a six-wheeled... It, it looks like it has monster truck wheels. Mm-hmm. And it's got six wheels, and it's a, f like, flat, all-terrain tank vehicle-looking thing. Mm -hmm. But then if you grab the back of it and, like, pull it up while holding the bottom down, yep. it actually, turn like, converts into a siege tower oh, cool. that also looks like, a like an angry tiki face. Oh, like I know that one. Yeah, I saw that kit recently, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that's awesome. And a lot of the Legos do stuff like that, so mm -hmm. which makes me feel a little more like, okay, well, there's a lot that you know went into this beyond just the the, the basic version. Yeah, Ice Planet Lego was one of my one of my favorite. Uh, someone says in the some um, Nit Spec Specabus. Spec mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce Specibus, that. Yeah. Says Chelsea. Yeah. Specibus. How long have you been doing Gunpla? Oh, um, so, I originally started this hobby as a kid uh, with Gundam Wing. Um, that show was on Toonami, uh, which was great in Australia because... In, so apparently it only was in Toonami Australia that there were Gundam Wing ads paired with Linkin Park music over on top. That's... It's amazing. Did you see those at Hot Topic? <laughs> I, no, we don't have Hot Topic, but it's great, because apparently... I was to ask you earlier if you did. No, uh, because apparently Linkin Park, the members, are just huge fucking nerds. Like, they have Gundam yes. models in the background of some of their shots and stuff. There's a there's a Linkin yes. Park Gunpla kit out there. Their Linkin Park's, the, whichever album I had, which was maybe their second or third, definitely just has robots on the I believe cover. that and is very uh, Points of Authority. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah, because that has, I'm pretty sure, in the end on it? God. Yes. Yeah. That one. Um, yeah, no, like, <laughs> they're just big old nerds, and which is great. Um, but yeah, uh, Gundam Wing, so I was, that was around, like, late 90s, and... I was 13 or 14. Well, let me just quickly check. Um, so Gundam oh. Wing premiered in... I'm gonna say like early, very early 2000s. It was over here probably on two. Yeah, early 2000s. Yeah, so 2002ish, roughly. 
Oh, wait, well, the funny right. thing is, it's a 1995 anime, but it only came to, like, certain places around, like, a date. Like, um... Yeah, it used to, it used to take us forever to get that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um... Let me just check. I mean, DBZ, DBZ was like a decade, right? Before it started coming on Something with the English like stuff? that. Yeah, so basically it was 2000 was when um, Toonami started airing it. So that makes sense. Um, that was around, yeah, fifth grade for me, which is when I started. Uh, so when I was about 10. 9 to 10 years old was when I started playing with Gunpla. I had no idea how to build them, and my mum was the one buying them for me, and I felt really, I feel really bad now in retrospect. Um, because I ruined some of those kits just by treating them like toys, uh, despite the fact that I was building them. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of glue involved later on. Um, those kits also were very different. Like, even f back then, even since then, I should say, the kits have changed in engineering, which is really cool to me. Um, because now I'm coming back to this and going, wow, this is so fucking new and awesome. Um, because those kits were, <laughs> were fine. But by today's standards, eh, they're, eh, they're okay. Like they they don't have the same proportions. They don't they're not designed as well. There's way too many stickers on them. They tried going for like oh some of these like parts are super like glossy metal, which leave a lot of shitty marks and scratches on them. So it's like not really worth getting them. Um, I will say I have definitely indulged in going back to some Gundam Wing kits because I bought a Death Scythe Hell Custom, the one with the big bat wings and uh, you know. Laser sight. Yup. Love yep. that one. That's my boy. Uh, I did also get so a. I saw. Hmm? I saw that when I was looking. Is that a new one or? or so that, 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 that's selling? a that's a more recent kit. So okay, I was gonna ask if they, if you can still buy twenty year old. You stats, can cause... if you want to. You you can. Um, you probably don't want to, really, unless you're going for a specific nostalgia collection. Sure. Uh, and even then, interesting because, yeah. mm -hmm. sorry, I was just because Lego uh, is actually really rough with that stuff. Like yeah. they stop make when they phase out a line, it's pretty much gone unless you want to pay three times what it's worth on eBay. You can find old kits of Gunpla. Uh, some of them uh, from Bandai they do like go out of print for a short while and they come back. Um. Not with those old ones, so there are some limited numbers left. Uh, depends what you're, you're what you're after. Um, what was it? But yeah, uh, they've been doing a more recent thing now with uh, what they call the Revive series, uh, which is where they basically get old kits um, from older seasons, like you know RX seventy eight two, the very first Gundam, the Gundam Grandpa Gundam, and you know they always re release that. Um, and they started with that. That's one of the best high grades you can get at the moment. It's got the most like simple, basic, but fantastic engineering for a high grade. Uh, it's like universally praised as a kit. I, if you ever want to start getting into Gundam and you don't know where to start with Gunpla, look up the high grade. Uh, it's called the High Grade uh, Revive uh, RX seventy eight two. Um, it's not hard to find. It's very affordable as well. It's pretty cheap and it's a great kit. I would also recommend the second in that uh, line, which is the Gun Cannon which is a wonderful little kit. I'd also recommend the Gyan in that series. That's great. Um, the the uh, Hayaku Shiki, which is uh, like all gold and stuff. And yeah, they also did a... Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, that's right, the All Gundam Project, where they basically, from every season of Gundam so far, they re-released new high-grade versions of all of the protagonist Gundams. Okay, cool. So that was actually really cool. Unfortunately, you know, that means you don't get, like, new high grades of the grunt suits or the secondary character suits, which is sometimes what you want, because you don't always want the hero basic Gundam, which is just blue, white, and red. I typically find the hero ones pretty boring, to they're, be honest. Like, they're, I don't they're the Red like Rangers. They're, they're... Yeah. They're very they're... similar. Like, yeah. that's the thing... And that's actually one of the reasons I like the... Gundam wing suits is because mm. I feel like they're pretty differentiated from each other. Yeah, that was um, a cool thing they were doing with that. But um, yeah, I I'm not a huge uh, fan of the. I I like the villain and and grunt suits more. I when you were talking earlier about how like they have to put a lot of design works and work into the um 
the grunts to make sure they look cool and and also because they've got to have like variations of them and stuff yeah i i forgot to mention it but the first thing i thought of was stormtroopers yeah when you said that yeah which is such a great design and also you can make a million different kinds of stormtroopers mm-hmm. by changing the the helmet like a little bit or yeah. adding accessories and then it's a snow trooper or whatever oh like, yeah that's a cool way to do bad guys yeah i, I exactly. like that a lot it's really fun um this one, especially for the Ayoshida in frame, that you can actually buy like little add-on uh, kits which change the head, which give it like a commander fin. Um, the other kits have been pretty cool that you can actually buy like weapon packs to give them different uh, attachments and stuff. So you can actually just make what you want. Like I'm thinking of getting like one that has a railgun in it just because that's a cool fucking weapon to give to one of my gunpla. I've also been considering getting into the more customization scene with painting and uh, like, you know, different builds and stuff. Do do people, so uh, okay. I have, I don't do it, but I've got a fair number of friends who do um, uh, Warhammer stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, that community has a bunch of people who use like that weird modeling clay stuff oh, to make yeah. like custom parts and stuff. Do people do that for Gundam? Sometimes people do, that's called uh, scratch building in the hobby. Okay. We basically create something new from either an existing part, or you just create something entirely new, like just using plastic, which is really super advanced. Uh, no one really expects you to do that because, like, dude, like <laughs> you're creating oh, yeah, no, just totally. you're just creating a new Gundam. Like, <laughs> um, a couple of people I knew mm-hmm. did it were were out of their minds with that stuff. So. Oh, yeah, especially because, like, with Warhammer, that's, like, an infinitely more expensive hobby as well, in comparison. Like, and also way smaller scale. Everything's tiny, way yeah. tinier than the Gundams. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, if you want, look up the Gundam, uh, what was it? It's called the Gundam uh, Builders World Cup. It's literally an international challenge uh, around... Diff- they have different like heats for different countries, so it depends on where you are the, um, and when it'll occur. But basically, they have different um, events for like you know under eighteen uh, contestants and like you know adult contestants and stuff. Where basically, as long as your customization doesn't infringe on third party like property, like you can't make like a Pokemon Gundam and stuff. As long as it's like sure. your own custom idea. You can enter that, and it'll be judged, and if you actually, like, win, or if you get to the finals, you get to go to Japan, and, like, meet the people behind the designs and stuff, and, like, there's a huge I... stadium event, and you just get, like, a bunch of kits as your award, and, like, a trophy and stuff. I am looking at some of these kit, these custom kits, and they're fucking ridiculous. There's one, I think, last year, uh, no, 2015, I want to say, uh, the winner for that. It looks like it's made all of plastic. That's the thing. As long as you use the kit, that's the important thing. It's made of, like, plastic, but it's made to look like wood. It looks like an antique wood carving. That's and cool. The cool I just thing saw is... one that's, like, a mm-hmm. wireframe yeah. style. That thing's neat. And, like, um, it's just really cool that, you know, yeah. you have an international competition between, like, not just Japan and China, but Japan, China, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, in Australia as well, in America, you have all these different countries that get to, like, show off their building. A lot of the the Gundam, the World Cup stuff, leans into something that I am not a really big fan of with Gundam, mm-hmm. which is just strapping more and more shit onto the back <laughs> of the fucking Gundam. Yeah. Until it is basically unrecognizable. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole thing. You're creating a new design, and frankly, you know, we're nerds. We just add more shit to it. Like, <laughs> it's. They, they look like, you know, to make another Power Ranger analog, they're like Red Ranger, like, suit upgrades. Yeah, I've never been a very big fan of those. It depends. Like, I like some of them just because, hey, it'd be cool if this, you know, close-range combat Gundam turned into, like, just a heavy artillery Gundam. That's a cool idea. Sure. That's fair. Let's see. We're just building the legs at the moment. Um, So this is what I'm talking about when I say the inner frame for the... um, 
uh, IBO kits. Let me just wait, see if that focuses. Yeah. So basically, um, normally for a lot of other kits, you just have like the armor plates. It'd just be like a lot of hollow parts or like there'd be a few connecting pieces, but it'd just be outer armor and that's your leg. But it's really cool that the entire in-universe conceit of Iron Blood Orphans that all of the mobile suits use frames, so they have to actually make the kits have frames as well. So that means more possibility, more detail. Like you actually get to have exposed bits of like mechanic, you know, machinery and stuff in this thing, which is a really cool idea. But then that's when they start to realize that costs a bit of bit more money to manufacture. So we've got to save money elsewhere, so that's why a lot of them are in like very basic uh, flat colors, and why in some kits you get a lot of stickers, which I hate. <laughs> I can't. I hate stickers I, so, so much. So let, let me guess. I, I, to me, the reason I don't like stickers, there's two reasons. One, mm -hmm. I'm bad at putting them on. Mm -hmm. But the bigger reason is that, to me, it always feels like I'm a little more okay with them in Lego because usually um, uh, they are things that you cannot do with a Lego block. Like, yeah. you just can't, period. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the times with the Gundam stickers that I've seen, it seems like it's just kind of a shortcut to not have to make a slightly more complicated part. Like, well, not even not, not make a more slightly complicated part. Just make a different colored part. It just right, saves them money true, on yeah. paint application in the manufacturing process. Gotcha. Which is really annoying because, you know... And then, unless you're super careful, it makes your part your part look crappier because it's never straight on, really. Yeah. Like, unless you're... And also, a lot of the stickers are, like, they, they don't look... They don't have a matte finish. They're very shiny. So yeah, that's true. So they it don't look as nice. Yeah. yeah. They don't they don't meld well, which is just super annoying. Um I'm running for time at the moment. Actually, we're not doing too badly. Just want to make sure we don't go over too far. Yeah. We basically got like an hour at least until um Emily and Jordan need to hop on and do the Mass Effect stream. Um, I will probably have to bounce in like another twenty minutes. Sure, no problem. Okay. I can see if anyone else from in our Slack channel wants to hop in on the Skype call. <sighs> Um, Master of Metroid says, in theory, I don't like strapping too many things on, but also I can't help loving the Psycho Zaku and Unicorn full armor, so oh my I'm God. a big hypocrite. Zach, look <laughs> those, look, look, really look those kids. I'm about to. Okay, Psycho Zaku. Okay, I, I actually kind of like this one because it's just guns. <laughs> like the the thing that I don't usually like is the like is the like anime wings. Oh, uh, okay. That I'm not a big fan of. Right. Uh, let's see. And unicorn full armor. Yeah, see, this is just rocket launchers, so that's <laughs> fine. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I hate, I hate those big fucking boosts on the back, though. They're so goddamn clunky. Oh, the ones that just straight up look like, uh, like, like uh, shuttle boosters. Yep, yeah, yep. that's silly. I did have someone. So, fucking uh, friend of mine, Josh. Um, he was buying Gundam. He he suddenly went. I didn't know Gundam took place in space. And I was like, dude, this space I mean, on the box art. Not all of it does. Like, no, it, all it, of it does. There are... all, all of it does. Well, well, no, I, what I mean is there is ground combat in Gundam. Yeah, no, yes, totally. They're, they're not on Earth. No, absolutely not. No, but what I'm saying but... is every season also has a shitload of space fight scenes. Sure. Well, they all have, like, a million boosters. Like, yeah. They're... Yeah. I, I wonder... I always wonder if they did that because they were like, well, they can't just be flying around. Yeah, we'll no, just, actually, yeah. We'll just do it in space. Because the people who make <laughs> Gundam as a, as a series are, like, big mechanical nerds sometimes. Sure. Because, like, if you're making a mecha anime, you've got to, you know, you, you want to, like, not be true to the real-life engineering, but you kind of want to, like, 
make shit kind of make sense. Which is funny because, uh, I mean, maybe eventually they'll prove me wrong. But as far as I can tell, there's no reason to make a robot a human shaped. No, <laughs> like, <I don't... laughs> like the only, like the whole point of that in any of this stuff is because you want something super like agile. They make them like unrealistically agile. Yes. Although you can look up, um, you can look up uh, one of my favorite designs, which is the gun tank, which is also from Gun uh, Gundam. And I, lo- I love that goofy robot so much. I'm looking up gun tank. Yes, I like this. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's just this, like this. this. This reminds me of like Star Wars extended fiction, yes. where they had Tie Fighter shaped tanks. Yep, yep. For no real reason. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, I kind of wish there were a few more like mobile suit designs for Gunpla that were a bit less humanoid because I kind of want a bit more variety in my collection to be honest. That's that's why like I really, when I get um, more shell space? Uh, when I get more shell space, I want to get the Master Gundam with the horse. Oh yeah, no, totally, yes. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you want the horse? I want a robot horse piloted by a robot or uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> by, by, by a horse. horse. Man... <laughs> Fucking G Gundam's a trip and a half. Yeah, I like, I like G Gundam. I I I know people were like, well, it's kind of racist, and I was like, well, I mean, oh, yes. okay, let's see, let's okay, Zach, be careful. Do you really want to <laughs> dig yourself into this and then well, try and dig yourself it's out? Just... It's more that, like, the whole thing is an enormous stereotype. Like, that's the whole thing. So, yes, you're right, but it's kind of the entire, uh, like, premise of the series, which, for some reason, makes me give it a little bit more of a pass. Like, I don't mind the Windmill Gundam, but you can't look past the Sombrero Gundam and that the Mexican system, like their satellite um, orbital space station world is shaped also like a sombrero. Like... Okay, the Gundam with a sombrero, that I'm okay with, because I think sombreros are awesome, and if I had a robot, I would totally put a sombrero (laughs) on it. Making your space station shaped like a sombrero, yeah, for some reason, that's over the line. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, good to know. Good to know. (laughs) God... Like seeing where your reasoning goes in this. All right, now here's. I think the... I want. Mm-hmm. There are um, people are are uh, posting their favorite G Gundams. Oh yeah. There are G Gundam Gunpla. I don't know if there's like one of the windmill Gundams. No, there. As far as I know, stuff. no. Now here's a funny thing. Did I mess up a part application? Because this is not attaching on as smooth as I'd like it to. Which is an issue. Uh, I see one. I don't know if it's custom, but I see <laughs> a. I see a windmill Gundam. If you can buy it, would it. you? Uh, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. All right, uh, Jordan <laughs> points out that there is. Uh, I've never played it this way, but for whatever reason, in in uh, Metal Gear Revengeance, oh, yeah. there is a costume where Raiden has a sombrero. Yep. And you can just play the whole game that way. <laughs> I like that. Even in that, like he sees some actual like actual Mexican people just point and go, "What the fuck is he doing?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good bit. And the fact that this fucking robot man with sombrero who, and poncho who thinks he's blending in jumps in a sewer hole, in a manhole, and just says <laughs> some, Adios, amigos. <laughs> and their response is just like, what the fuck was that? Let's just pretend we didn't see it. Let's just move on. 
<laughs> Let's just, our lives would be better if we pretended <laughs> oh right okay I did forget that there was an African one that was modeled after a Zulu yep. warrior yep that's pretty bad yep <laughs> listen G Gundam is a fun show you can't think about it for too long <laughs> you can't or else you're just gonna be sad alright so at the moment I'm just attaching the uh pieces, to the armor pieces themselves, to the actual frame. I just like the look of this. This is really cool. It, I feel like I'm actually building a robot. That's the cool thing about Gunpla. Yeah, it's, it is, it is, it's cool to see, like, the progression, because you can, that is one thing about Lego, is like, usually you can't tell like what you're building until it's like mostly done yeah but that's not the case with uh gunpla it's like this is the leg this is the hand this right is the... i will say Media hands are the at... worst part uh, uh, jules will you join the grays off i don't know what that means oh okay so that is uh what i was telling you before um blue dude aka shane uh he wants to do a build off where basically we all buy the same kit and then we try and like make the best version of that we can out of it. Oh, cool. That's fun. The funniest thing, though, every time he came to me with an idea for it, uh, and he brought up a kit, I was just like, I own that. Like, I already own that one, so I'm not going to buy another oh, one. Oh, yeah, you already, already built it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Although, I mean, I would love to do that. I'm just also, like, I'm terrified of painting a kit. <laughs> like, that's permanent. I can't fix that. Yeah. That's fair. I don't want to fuck it up. I I definitely, when I broke a piece on my very first one, I, for a, a second I was like, I might just be done. Because if <laughs> I can't fix this and I can't build the robot because I broke a piece, that is a morale buster. For it really sure. is. Like, yeah. It's the saddest thing. Luckily, a lot of, these, a lot of stuff can't just be super glued back together real quickly. But yeah, man. there's, um, I was lucky in, in that it was like a cosmetic piece. It was not like uh, okay. a, a structural piece. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you would do if you broke, like, I mean, super glue, it's not like those models are holding up a ton of weight. No, no. Like those things are pretty light, so. I will say I once, like, there was a, supposed to be like a little, um, peg that I attached something to. It was, I want to say, hold the camera, like this small like it's about you know say the width of the white part of your fingernail and i had to super glue that back onto the kit oh boy that was a terrifying and annoying uh say two hours just to make sure it was okay so i believe let me just check this seems to be one completed leg we've got all right woo and you guys just already see like this amount of articulation in it like, it's got a double knee bend and everything. Yeah, that's cool. I like the, like, strut on it. The, like, ankle strut thing. Yeah. It, it, it goes to what you're talking about with, like, extended, or er, exposed mechanical stuff. I, the one thing I would love is if it had, like, an ankle tilt. This one doesn't have as much of an ankle tilt. You can still move it, but, like, there's not a dedicated ankle t uh, tilt um, joint to it, which some of the IBO kits have. Um, like, when I recently built the uh, gear rail. Anyway, just gonna leave it there. And this is the nice thing I like about building legs first. You just, you see a leg. It's like, oh, cool. That's what I'm aiming towards. Um, Shane has brought my attention to the fact that there are model kits of character busts. Yes, there are. I don't even understand how... So... <laughs> okay, some people really just want the characters, not the robots, um, from these shows. And... For the protagonist and, you know, the main ladies usually, they'll make, like, a waist-up bust model that you can buy and build. Bust specifically, in this case, because boobies. Well, no, but also, <laughs> like, in this case of, say, I'm Blood Orphans, where the in-universe conceit for them, like, piling better is if they're shirtless. The men. <laughs> Excuse me? So, the whole deal is that in I'm Blood Orphans... The pilots who have the best mobility control are ones who've had, like, this terrible 
child uh, soldier surgery in their spine, which allows them to like connect, to, like in a neural sense, to the uh, mobile suit itself. So they have oh, to be okay. shirtless a lot of the time. You couldn't possibly just make a shirt with like holes in it. You've the funniest thing is just... the fu the funniest thing is so they do that on the ground when the, on the, in ground in orbit in atmosphere combat they don't wear a shirt in space though they have you know anime tight spacesuits that have like the hole in the back so it's like why didn't you just oh, wear sure. that in the ground on the ground Eva suits Eva suits yeah exactly plug suits yeah pretty much. Gotcha. But, um, man, it's just really funny that it's just an excuse to show some, like, buff young men in that show. Well, I mean, you know, as one of the few shows that, like, knows it has a big female audience, it's just like, fuck it, female gays. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> God, it is funny, though, like, reading the history about that. Because, like, it was the case where it was only the female fans who literally wait outside the voice acting recording like studios for the actors to come out when they're filming the original Gundam season and stuff like that's how big the f the fans were into this and it's like that's really cool to hear I'm glad that they've you know they at least know that um a nice thing I also like about Gunpla is that the community is actually for the most part pretty cool like it's the shitty thing where when you go into any nerd hobby you kind of have to expect assholes and a sure, lot of misogyny of course, yes. it's a real fucking shame no matter where you go even hobbies like magic the gathering where wizards of the coast are directly trying to like address that and like they're very strict yeah. about venues being all inclusive and safe spaces which is great but um you still get like shitty people and like that's just gonna happen because of human beings gunpla for the most part um because it so heavily like markets itself towards and appeals to people of all ages, of all genders, um, across the whole spectrum, you just get a whole variety of fans right out of the gate. And you That's will cool. still get, like, you know, I'll, if I go to a build meet now, like my local place, it'll mostly be guys, but they'll be fine with me. They don't give a shit. Like, they're not That's gonna... Cool. I've never been asked when I've been buying a kit, oh, is this for your boyfriend? <sighs> I've never gotten Man. that, and that's... It's shitty that I, that's a nice surprise to me. I'm so bad at, like, the... I'm not good at, like, inserting myself in a conversation between other people, especially not when it's, like, a combative or shitty one. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, when I used to work at GameStop, I did... I had a co-worker who asked uh, a lady, is this game for your boyfriend? And I was like, dude, don't fucking do that don't Stop fucking it. ask that <laughs> like seriously don't ask that like <sighs> because God. even if they say yes like okay what is, what was the point like, of that what you yes why do you need this information <laughs> yeah what are you trying to prove like seriously it's ridiculous um ugh. but yeah no like i've really enjoyed that this like you wouldn't expect a model making community to be as inclusive as this. No, you, 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 I would probably expect it to be pretty insular. Like, yeah. yeah the, but, I, I get where, where you're coming from. Yeah, and they're all super chill about everything. I've not seen any... I've not seen any shitty people who, like, review Gunpla or build Gunpla or, like, uh, c go to these meetings. Which is a... I would wonder... Pretty nice thing. I wonder if, um... It's it's probably a pretty small community compared to other like nerd communities. Yeah, I wonder if um, because some of the bad like crappy nerd behavior happens when people start to feel like they're like losing control, quote unquote, of their yeah. special hobby. And I I wonder if the fact that it's very small mm. leads people to be more like, yeah, come on in, like we we can use more people. I don't, and not so much think as much like i'm gonna check right now how big the australian community i'm part of on facebook is uh just out of curiosity as well so uh gunpla builders australia has 2600 members 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. Like, the nice thing I like about it is that, so you'll get people like going, oh man, here's my, uh, here's my very first kit I just bought posting online. And people are like, hey, awesome, dude. Cool kit. Um, or people are like, hey, this is my like, you know, 50th build. I've like customized, I've painted it. Uh, it's got all the new stuff. People are like, hey, that's a really nice custom job you've done, man. I'll then see like, Parents going, hey, my uh, little girl, she just built her first, like, very first tiny, like, you know, super deformed kit, and they were like, oh, that's awesome to see her getting into the hobby. Like, no one is shitty. Like, no even... one's like, why didn't you sand down the. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's no, like, major elitism. The only thing you'll really see sometimes is people, like, having specific hyper, like, um, picky preference on, like, you know, oh, you should support your local hobby shop instead of buying online, even though it's cheaper, or like, oh, you know, you should definitely panel line that kit as well, and it's like, well, I mean, they're not really, like, shitting on you either, they're just telling you what they would do in your situation. It's, it's so weird, it's, like, baffling to me that a freaking anime robot community is nice. <laughs> That's cool. It's really yeah, a shame awesome. as well when that, you that's... see like, yeah, like other model making communities I've I've heard of are just like the complete opposite. Like, they just... well, I so I never got into uh, I never got into Warhammer, and like if there are people listening who are into it and like it, like I'm not saying this about everybody, but I did go to uh, I have been to Warhammer events and just like. It's the most like insular like rules lawyer commu- like just really nasty communities and yeah. it, I, that did not help me that on top of the fact that that hobby is expensive as fuck mm-hmm. uh, like I have a lot of friends who tried to get me into it and I was just like no I think I'm good <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of time with these people and and also buy all this crap yeah I, it was funny there's an Australian um trans woman comedian and like singer and stuff she's part of like a comedy trio and uh she recently came out and stuff it's been fun seeing her whole journey with that and she's also a huge warhammer nerd and she brought her army to a game at one point and she got asked like are you using your boyfriend's army Uh, just because Uh... it was so well put together and the funny thing was she was like oh my god i'm just experiencing regular ass vanilla misogyny this is so weird to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, just, God. Like, I'll say yeah, this, I never get, sucks. I never get, like, when I go to the hobby store, I don't get assholes trying to hit on me or trying to, like, act all superior when I, like, am holding a kit in my hands. People are just super nice about this for the most part. I, I yeah. bet there's still some shittiness. There can't be. Uh, yeah. It, it can't be a hundred percent niceness. Yeah. Right. But that's cool though. There was the time I accidentally, um, maybe like, I, t- I, I don't know if you heard the story about me. I went into the store one day and was just looking at stuff to buy, and then there was a mom and dad with three little boys, and they were all looking to buy the sons like their first kits. And there's a display case full of, like, the custom kits that people have built, um, who are part of the community. And oh, that's who, awesome. like, Yeah, it's a really nice thing uh, in that section for the store to have, and it encourages the community to, like, add more to that. And, like, the parents have no freaking clue what's what on the no, shelf no, no. and what's they, in the display they case. They just basically are trusting, like, whatever the person tells them. Yeah. And there wasn't a store employee there at the time, and they were just, like... So I've noticed, I've also noticed as well, like, a lot of parents and, and stuff, they will look, like, a, at a robot that's, like, blue and white with, like, you know, you know the trademark Gundam yellow V-fin and everything, and they pull out a kit, a box, with, like, a green robot on that has, like, a red eye, and they go, oh, is this it? It's like, do you just not pay attention to the fucking detail? Like, anyway, <laughs> um, like, I was severely worried about, like, the dad's eyesight at some point when I was just overhearing this conversation while looking at stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, they were wondering, like, oh, the kids wanted specific kits from the, um, case, and, uh, I... I was trying really hard not to interject myself, because then they finally got a store employee. I was like, okay, he'll take care of it. And he was explaining to them, like, oh, these are custom ones a lot of people have built, but we can show you the base models that, you know, they come from, and he was doing a really good job with that, and then he couldn't find some of the kits on the shelf, and then I started pulling them out and handing them to him. 
Because <laughs> he was just like, oh, that one, that's the, uh, G uh, you know, the Gundam um, GP01, uh, we don't have the real grade version of that, which is in the uh, display case, and I just like, cause also, real grade is fucking tough, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't think a 10 year old should build that, so right. I just silently yeah. pulled out the high grade one that was right in front of me and just handed it to him, and he's like, oh, actually, here's the high grade one, thanks, uh, okay, <laughs> and then, like... <laughs> Do you work here? No, I'm just a big old nerdo. No, no. It's and fine. Then, fucking one of um the other employees who like it must have been his day off because he was just he obviously like was uh, an employee there because I'd seen him before and he just came in casual clothes out of uniform and he was like, hey man, did we get did we get any of those uh high grade hakushikis in? And he was like, um I don't know. And I just quietly again just pulled out one from the shelf and handed it to him. And the, <laughs> the guy went to the actual guy on duty, which went, fucking, she's better at you than this. <laughs> 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 Gunfoot Ninja Jewel. And then I was like telling the kids like, oh yeah, I've got that kit myself, it's a really cool one, I own it at home and stuff. And I just realized like, my god, I'm a freaking anime character, aren't I? Like <laughs> fucking Here I am offering sage gunpla advice and stuff and like <laughs> Listen, everybody's got their things. It's fine. <laughs> it's so hard for me to not, like, overhear someone and go, man, I really want to talk about Gunpla with them. Like... <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. <laughs> Alright, well, I gotta bounce. Alright, no problem. Fun. I, I'm gonna hop into uh, the chat as well, then, and just see what people are saying. Okay. That, And thanks, thanks for joining me. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally up for this another time. I'll probably do this again... Yeah most likely next week as well, um, but I'll continue on for another cool. half an hour or so. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Alright, see you later. Alright, talk to you later. Bye. Bye, -bye. Right, well, I don't know what people are saying, so I'm just going to hop into the chat for a bit, because we'll continue the stream for another, you know, half an hour or so, like I said. Um, just log in, and if anyone else wants to join in on the Skype call, I'll wait for a moment. I've just got to actually load up the chat so I can actually see people talking first, because I won't have any clue if people want to join in and stuff. Yeah, let's check the dashboard, and... And stuff. Cool. Alright, so yeah, um... And where were we? Yeah, I'm just currently building the waist at the moment, and we've got this so far. I'm pretty sure we just need to build the back skirt for it now, because that'll be the main thing. And we'll probably... We'll probably start on maybe the torso, and then that's where we might leave it off at, uh, depending on how long, how much longer we go. But yeah, uh, definitely keep chatting, chatting away, keep talking, talk to me, tell me what you think. How are people actually liking the stream? Because if people want to see more of it, please let me know. I'm also recording this as well, so if people do miss it, or if you just come in and you're wondering what the hell this is all about, I'll upload this too. Um, also let me know if there's actually, like, you know, technical difficulties, because we'll try to work on that as best as we can. <laughs> there's only so much I can do on Australian internet. I also have some other kits lined up uh, for future builds. Again, if people want to keep watching this. I don't know why... I'm surprised people were into this as much as they were um, when I first brought this up. But I'm not going to judge them. I mean, it's cool that people want to join in on this hobby. I'm glad people are finding it fun. Alright, yeah, um... God, hold on, let me... DM you then, blue dude. Tell you my Skype username, which... I have no idea what it actually is. Alright. Yeah, that makes sense. Unless you want to do Discord. <laughs> and yeah, uh... Jordan in the chat, there is, man, I could, talking about the whole entirety of the Gundam, like, TV show would take a long time. Again, it's like, f freaking 40 years or so, if not, about, like, just the history of that entire thing. Yeah, we can do Discord. Let me just get out of Skype then, because... 
That's resource intensive, to say the very least. Yeah, there's so much Gundam, like, I'm... Oh God. So, uh, for reference, I guess, I haven't watched a huge amount of it. Um, I do have my favourite seasons, though, which are Double O, and at the moment I'm really liking um, I Am Blooded Orphans. I've not watched a lot of Universal Century. I have watched the entirety of Unicorn, though, and that's a ridiculous show! I love how, ri like, freaking off-the-wall Unicorn gets. It's great. It's great. And, yeah, like, man, when Gundam's great, it's wonderful. When it's bad, oh boy. Because as much as I do like IBO, um, there are some bits in Iron Blood Orphans which I do not agree with whatsoever. Uh, on In many, many, many ways. Uh, especially with recent episodes and stuff. I can call. Shane, if you want me to, if you want to join in on a freaking gunpla call, you've got to make yourself available to call. Unless I've got a setting in Discord, because. Whoops, switched the camera by accident. Don't know how that happened. Oh, I must have hit one of my um, hotkeys. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm also pretty glad this worked out technically for the most part. Uh, aside from a couple hiccups at the start, hey, this went smoothly. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that I will be playing Destiny with my boyfriend in a little bit, and uh, we have some other audio entropy hosts who want to do their own streams, um, I would continue this for a bit longer if I could, but, you know. It's also fun to space out these kits. It gives me time to actually, like, recoup and such. Get, get in there. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. We'll do that. Alright, uh, hopefully this is working. Hello. All right. Uh, yep, you're being picked up by the desktop audio, so great. Hello. Hi. Hooray. How's it going? Pretty good. So, everyone, this is, uh, Blue Dude, a.k.a. Shane. Shane, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am in America. Mm-hmm. Very far away from Australia. Didn't, yep. Don't know if many people know that. I have been building Gunpla for off and on for a while. I made one when I was like 15. Okay. Didn't touch it again till Iron Blooded Orphans. I have no <laughs> idea where the first Gunpla ended up. <laughs> what was it? I think it was the Alex. The what? The it's it's a gun it's a G Gundam from War in the Pocket. Oh is a right, yes. Movie. Yeah, yeah. And it has a big sticker that says Alex on it, which I <laughs> I was very confused about as a child. I mean, yeah, because your name's not Alex. No, I'm not Alex. <laughs> Who's this for? <laughs> Did I get someone else's kid? Exactly. Oh, that was really funny recently when, um... So there's a character in Iron Blood Orphans, again, the most recent season, uh, whose name is Julietta, and I was like, oh, cool, name is Julietta oh. and stuff. And then... Her most recent mobile suit in the series is, you know, the Julia, and I was like, it's pretty close to me, so I kind of have to buy that. It's also very green, which is very much my uh, aesthetic. That one looks so good. 
Because it's just a It's just Zone of the Enders. Yeah. Like, okay, if you want to look up people, uh, look up Regan Lays Julia. R-E-G-I-N-L-A-Z-E. Julia. It is a hell of a freaking design. I love it. Alright, let's get this piece. This one looks like it's actually going to be cheap, which is... Surprising. Insane. I want to... Does that come with its own stand? Because it, like... Has yeah, it it needs yeah. to. I don't think it can actually stand on its own. It it can apparently because it comes with a, a different feet for that, what? which I find very funny. Like it's got standing feet and flying feet because fuck it. <laughs> it's also got chain swords. It's got it's... chain whip swords. Oh, it's such a cool design. It has everything. Yeah. It's the right amount of ridiculous for me. All right, so let's actually. The legs on the waist now because we have a completed waist. Ta da! Might bring the camera a bit closer so you can actually see that stuff. One moment. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I like the Hyrokin better as a space design though. Like, mm. it's pretty close. Yeah, it's tough. There's a lot of good designs in IBO because they're so different from what we're used to seeing in Gundam. Mm -hmm. It's a new age. It's I great. love that they all have tiny waists. Yeah, and like little like hip skirts which don't get in the way of stuff, because now we've got this buddy. A Hold on. This is my usual test of uh posability and rigidity of joints is can it do the Michigan J Frog pose? Which oh. kit is this by the way? Uh this is the uh hi high grade uh IO sheet and frame. A it can do Ah uh, yeah. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rock time girl. I have been building that. I have been building one in the exact opposite order. <laughs> I I do realize what you meant before when we were talking in private about uh, nub marks with this one. Yeah, no, that thing like you touch you touch it wrong, and all of a sudden you have like a bright red mark compared to the dark red. Yeah, cause like so uh, for viewers. When you're building a lot of the colored pieces in kits, um, that's when you're gonna get those really like awful white or like brightly colored stress nub marks on them. So you just have to be careful. Like I think an example, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that because that's so tiny in comparison. But I have eliminated a lot of them through filing and through my sanding. But that has left some uh, sanding marks on some of these bits and pieces. So it's the price you pay. It depends whether you can deal with you know grinding marks or just awful white splotches on the plastic. Uh, people are different, you know? Alright. You know, it wouldn't be a that. problem if mm -hmm. you painted it. Don't tempt me. Listen, I'm getting to that point, alright? I, I was explaining I'm terrified of painting these things. And also, that's what my boyfriend's for. He can paint. I don't want to paint. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. But I don't think... <sighs> that's gonna be quite a journey for that kit. Yeah... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've I... been m messing with mm -hmm. my first mm -hmm. attempt at painting with a uh, Astroth. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that. Uh, I'm doing desert colors. I took it from a bright blue and red dude, and I'm slowly turning it um, brown, like camera brown, and stuff, lighter yeah. brown. And it's a cool I'm going to make all the red parts like neon green. Oh, well, why? <laughs> That's not that's not desert. So, one second, let me find that somebody because somebody did a mock up of this years like a year or two ago. Okay. Right, like, so got a got a blank version of it, I mean, the like, line art of it, and just colored it in. I it need to great. find more line art like versions so I can like map out the colors better if I do actually want to do customization later on. Uh, for people let, let, just letting people know, I'm now starting work on the body. Again, that's going to be hard to see with the camera, but what, not much we can do Here we there. go. Yeah, let's see. Oh, I get it. That's not neon green. That's like a pale teal green. Thank you very much. Eh. It's pretty cool. You, you are talking to colors an, are hard, an undergraduate. Okay. Fair, so I'm going to be fair. picky about the colors when you say them. I know I have the discussed... The only thing that happened is... Yeah, go on. I lost... I lost the nub on the end of the crotch, and I can't decide <laughs> if I'm dis if I'm sad about that or not. <laughs> because... 
I mean, Zone of the Enders has Hella cockpit crotch. crotches, but she... yeah, yeah. God, I do love that the cockpits in Zone of the Enders are literal, just in the freaking robot cock. Like, you can't get mm -hmm. around that. You can't get around it's that. A... It's a cockpit. <laughs> yeah, it's very subtle commentary, actually. You know, on the military-industrial complex in space. No, my dick's bigger. <laughs> oh, my dick's bigger. <laughs> I, I kind of wish Zonian has went that way at some point. <laughs> Maybe it does. I've not played all of those games, so who knows. Someone will know out there. Now, I have discussed uh, doing giving doing a, a custom paint job for a high gog. Uh, again, for people curious out there, Google uh, H-Y-G-O-G-G, -G, high gog. That thing is a wonderful little uh, claw hand swim boy of a robot that uh, my boyfriend and I both love the design of and he likes the color red and I was like my gog is so fucking weird it's so fucking weird it's got these weird lanky arms and stuff and it's got like this tiny squat body and this big disc head it's ridiculous I love it so you're just gonna make a high gog custom a Char's high gog yeah the funniest thing is that the um, high grade one it's an old kit but it comes with a translucent red eyepiece, and also that head is big enough to fit an LED unit inside. So I'm like, God. maybe, maybe I could just light that shit up. That's the other thing. I wish. I, oh God, I did that to a. I need to grab. I'll grab a picture of this for yeah. you later. But I did that to a petite guy the other day. Oh, petite awesome. Bear guy. Yeah. I. The head is just big enough that if you take apart one of those like little t fake tea lights, mm -hmm. it will go in there. Oh, awesome! I dremeled out the eyes <laughs> so the light would come through. I put tape. I put tape over the eyes so you wouldn't see the light directly, and because the lights naturally flicker, it looks like it's like powering on and off. Um, and I just grimed the shit out of the entire thing. <laughs> God. It, it looks like an abandoned park ride. Oh no! I don't like that at all. That's terrifying. Oh no! Uh, it's like disconcerting. Yeah, I will say as well, to folks, it. folks out there, uh, if you don't know, uh, Google gun, uh, Gunpla Bear Guy. That is, if people are worried, like, oh, these kits are nice and cool robots, but what if I want something cute? They've made that for you. Don't you worry. The they Bear Guys are the top weapons hat grade cuteness. Soon. Yeah, Papa Bear Guy, because he's got a top hat and a mustache and a cane. And you've got all the petite bear guys and stuff, and all the different colors. I've got a, I got a con exclusive uh, green one, Zaku green one. I'm very happy about it. I still got to make that, buddy. And, um... I think the custom bear guys are my favorite thing. Oh yeah, just because it's a freaking, it's a bear guy. Like here's like... Digimon bear guy. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's every character ever as a bear. It's great. I love it. Uh, next thing they just need to make is um Gunpla like Kigurumis, like those uh animal onesies. Give me that. Oh god. Give me that. Alright, see you later Jordan. Uh have fun with your stream, which will be in about twenty or so minutes, cause yeah, probably finish about fifteen, twenty minutes. I've got a destiny date to go to. Destiny. Yeah, Destiny. We're Destiny. all done, you just drug him back in. I... Listen. Listen, he came with his own free will, okay? <laughs> I, d I didn't try to convince him of anything. He was just like, man, those look weird. Those, man, I kind of miss playing. I was like, yeah, it's fun. Isn't it? <laughs> Destiny is a pretty good game. Destiny is a pretty good game that doesn't, ha doesn't have much new in it at the moment, which is makes it kind of boring. But it's a good hangout game, is what it is. Yes. Because it's just fun to just bullshit with friends and play, you know, shooty shooty space people with. Where does this go? Okay. All right. So just building the torso at the moment. I really like the IBO torsos because they're super like faux complex mechanical bullshit. I want to color the inside of one. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Um, because the nice thing, you know, is that you see the, you know, inside of the frame and stuff for once, so you actually get to know what this all looks like. I really want them to to do a Barbatos real raid. I think that'd be really cool. 
I'm surprised they haven't that at this point. Would be... I seem to not just want to do that with the PPRDs. They want to... No, not the PPRDs. God, I'm reading Amazon instead. Um, <laughs> the IBO yeah, cause they stuff. Yeah, they're not making master grades of them. They're making a 1 to 100 scale no grades, which is fine. Like, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's like all the, all the kids are like, all right, we're going to make the bare minimum to keep it cheap, keep it easy, mm -hmm. and just try to make it look good. I guess it makes sense to keep it affordable because they want as many people as possible buying these kits. But man, I kind of wish there was a Master Grade Barbatos or Vidar. Eh, well, you take what you can get. Biggest can't be choosers and all that. Mm hmm. Like, I wish there were good modern kits of the um, Gundam Wing Grunt suits. I want, like, a Leo and a Taurus and stuff. Like. But no. Sadly, no. Man, we're pretty much I want a also, huh? wound wart, but that's not going to happen. Which one's that one again? Uh, let me find a picture of it, because it's yeah. just... Oh, it's it's from a manga that they don't have full rights to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they ever make a kit, they'd have to pay royalties to mm. someone else. Which they're not going to do. Nope. Because they're not going to fucking give their money to someone else. Jesus. There's a relatively cheap resin kit, but I looked at what goes into uh, doing resin and like... Mm -hmm. I don't have the ability to have to drill poison things in my house. Yeah, maybe not. Like, I mean, not at the moment. Who knows? I don't want to have to wear a mask while working on a kit. Yeah, that's another thing as well with the painting. I'm just... I know I don't have to do that with just, just like regular paint, but man, painting is a pain in general. It is, it is a bit, like... I just use acrylics that I used when I used to paint Warhammer models, so it's right. like relatively easy cleanup. If I mess up, I can just take a paper napkin to it. Mm -hmm. But if you're going like, all right, I have a spray booth, and I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, mark everything down and yada yada yada. yada. Do you yada. apply a base coat to your stuff when you're painting it at the moment? Um, I did for like half of it, and then I tried painting one piece without the base coat mm -hmm. and I noticed no difference in like how well it connected or anything <laughs> and also it, I start, I like I finished half of it in the summer right and then it got to winter and you can't really spray paint it in the winter no yeah of course not like I'll probably base coat in this I'll probably base coat in like the summer again but like for now I don't I don't care enough no yeah that's fair enough it's not, it's not like I move it around a lot like it's not gonna get it's not gonna get messed up without a base coat, it's just gonna sit on my shelf. Right, I get what you mean. Yeah, a lot of my kits just sit on my shelf at the moment. Um, I play with them occasionally. I sometimes put them in silly poses because, you know, I have to. That's half the fun of Gunpla sometimes, it's just putting them in funny poses like all hell. I've got my, um, uh, Zagok and my Hygog uh, as just arms around each other, like, posing for the camera. I just saved them for my cat. <laughs> See, I've got both a dog and Gumball model, so I can take lots of funny pictures with everyone. Oh no. No, mine are all on a high up shelf next to a creepy <laughs> stuffed animal owl. Okay. <laughs> they're they're not coming down. They're not they can't be on my desk. Yeah, being, like, but with a cat. Line of yeah. Fire. yeah. It's like the only deterrent I'd have for a cat, which is just knocking stuff off, because like I frankly keep messy desks. I've cleaned up my desk for this, you know, stream and everything. But we might actually almost be done with this kit. Uh, but I do want to take a break and, you know, not push too far. But yeah, huh. Let's see how we're going. Because by next week, I might have another kit ready to build for a stream. Hmm. That's always the tough part. Wondering what to do for next week. <laughs> Let's just see how we're going here, cause man, this is a good kit. This is a good looking kit. Just 
Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's a good kit if you wanted to make, like, a human-sized robot model, like, as a base. Right, yeah. Because that thing doesn't scream, this is this is huge, that, lo- that looks like it could be out of District 9. Yeah, no, this looks like it... almost like a, yeah, human-sized, just like, you know, android, like... It's got good proportions as well, yeah. Yeah. This is a cool freaking model kit. All the grunt suits are great. Alright, favorite Everything that favorite grunt just... suits. Let's hear them. Um The Grays is like The Grays is really just good. great for me. Mm-hmm. I really like the Grays. Um it, the problem is I don't know many of the grunt suits because like I watched IBO and I just started going through the original Gundam. Oh, okay, yeah. No, fair enough. Zaku is pretty good though. Zaku's just iconic. Like I like I like how like bad it actually is. Mm-hmm. Like if you shoot it in if you shoot it in the head, it goes nuclear. If you do this, it can't breathe. If you do this, 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 this. Yeah. Like it's a it's shitty not robot. A good... It has like all the problems that actual like mass produced things have. Like here's this here's this uh new jet that we made. You can't go full speed and turn at the same time or else you're gonna pass out. Yep. <laughs> like uh I I like when they include that stuff in Gundam. It's fun. I will say, hmm. I do have a Master Grade uh, GNX from Double O, which is coming in, which looks like a really cool kit. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, the Grays period. Actually, what would, what was your idea for this Grays build off? You've, you've got cooking up in your head. So I actually kind of despise the Gundam I got from Thunderbolt. Oh, yep, the full. And I'm armor. looking at it. Yeah, it's it's too many pieces. It takes up my entire shelf. It's yeah. just clunky and not that great. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking at it, and all I see is a bunch of thrusters. And I'm looking at my grays that I don't need because I have the grays custom also. And I'm thinking like, all right, all the thrusters on that, plus a bunch of other bullshit, plus the cannon from the grays custom. Mm-hmm. I just want to make. I just want to take a grays and just make it the biggest thing. <laughs> Okay. What if we actually spent money on this mech? Right, yeah. What if we, like, gave, like, our soldiers a fighting chance? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd be up for that. I mean, I don't own a base Graze. Really? Yes. I've got the, uh, 1100 Graze Custom, and that's, and I own a Graze Carter. The Akata Ritter Grays, yeah. So I could yeah. easily just buy a base Grays and, like, uh, customize that. I, it, this would force me into painting, which, you know, might actually be the good kickstart I need. And I could actually help you through that, because it's, it's not that hard if you use acrylic. Like, you don't, I don't need think it's hard. I'm just... just I don't think it's hard, I'm just scared. So yeah, uh, I'd be willing to give that a shot. Plus, I've, I have this—I have a cart full of styrene sitting in my Amazon thing, and I'm. <laughs> oh no! No 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 no! What are you doing? I want to take the Shane, dive. what are you doing? Shane, what are you doing? Please, please. Con- I already this. picked out a robot that I want to try to scratch build. Oh boy, you're really gonna okay. That's fair enough. That's a cool idea. I respect that. I'm just scared for you. Oh yeah, no. This is this is how you end in uh For those who don't know, styrene is basically just like hard plastic. Like mm-hmm. if you see like super if you see somebody make a giant like train out of out of stuff, it's usually styrene. Right. Yeah. It it's for so real it's intense nice like plastic. model makers, yeah. And you're just gonna fucking make a robot, okay? Like, put me to fucking shame over here. <laughs> I 
want to make the dude on the left. <laughs> I rem- I remember the image. I remember the picture. I understand the need to want to make a robot. I don't know. I, I feel like I've been making thing. I feel like it's not that big a step from what I've been doing with uh, papercraft. Okay, that's fair enough. It's like it's it's the same thing, except I just have thinner, thicker pieces and don't need to do dumb bullshit to get curves. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I can understand that. Right, well, we've got about ten minutes to go, so I'm just gonna. Plus, if I do this, no one's. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna have my parents banging down my door, trying <laughs> to get me to build like eight birds by Sunday for a meeting. Oh yeah, I know that feeling when you become the creative child, and that you they start utilizing that as best they can. I joined a. Uh, I joined a printing club, mm-hmm. and even though I wasn't the one doing any of the creating, I was just there to help. Like I was, my parents were telling people who worked in nonprofits in town to ask me to help design T-shirts. And like, <laughs> oh buddy, oh buddy, you got roped in real bad. Like my dad kept trying to convince me, hey, you should just make this fish that you have and give it to one of my friends. <laughs> like, I this that koi fish you're looking at, I I sat down at like nine a.m. on a Sunday, and that was finished at like. 6 p.m. I yep. can't just spit one out quick. No, yeah, my parents have tried to rope me in, like, oh, you should make, you know, business cards for your aunt and stuff. It's like, okay, she wants them in, like, a week. I can't do that. Like, <laughs> for no money? I can't do that. Anyway, I think we're probably going to end the stream here, and this is a pretty cool fucking robot. So, uh, tune in, I'm going to say, tentatively okay. next week. Same time, uh, Saturday, 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Because we seem to have ironed out most of the technical kinks. Uh, people seem to enjoy this. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I'm glad people could join in on this. This is really cool. Uh, it's, also good to, it's good to have like someone to bounce off and talk about this shit with. And if, once we finish, you know, this little cricket hooligan, because I can't wait to build his wonderful cricket bat, because seriously, it's a freaking cricket bat. <laughs> once we build that, uh, once we get him done, uh, we'll see, because I've got a few kits. I've got the transient, I've got the helm wig, I've got GM ground type. I've got a lot to build, and I think they'd all be fun oh, to show. Oh, the helm wig. Hmm? Are you actually going to try to make that into a, uh... Shovel Knight? No. Shovel Knight. No, someone already did it, and I'm glad that exists in the world. <laughs> the fact that it exists in the world makes me happy, and that's all I need. So, alright, until next time, uh, see you later, everyone. Keep building. Bye.